I wasn't able to see Pelé play, but I've seen Ronaldo, and I've never seen a player like him. He's unique. There's only one Ronaldo, number one in everything. He could do whatever he wanted with the ball. If he decided to score, then he'd score. He had strength and technique, could play anywhere, on any pitch, against any opponent. He was above everyone else. That's Ronaldo, someone who gets the ball, runs into the box and scores. He only needs half a chance. There's no stopping him. He was one of the best players I've ever seen, truly a phenomenon. If there's anyone who deserves that nickname, the phenomenon, then it's him. He is phenomenal. AC Milan against Livorno, February 2008. The Rossoneri were on the attack and Brazil legend Ronaldo was the target. The star striker was grounded by a seemingly innocuous challenge, but he'd ruptured ligaments in his left knee, the third such injury of his career. It looked like the end, the latest and perhaps final setback of an injury-ravaged career. But this was Ronaldo. The phenomenon is... The phenomenon is the best example I've ever seen of an athlete making an incredible comeback against all the odds. Indeed, only two years later, Ronaldo was back in his native Brazil and back doing what he knew best for Sao Paulo Club Corinthians. The three times World Player of the Year had once again shown his capacity to triumph in adversity and prove his doubters wrong. Not for the first time in a glittering 15-year career, Ronaldo was back. His roller coaster journey to the top of world football began here in Bento Ribeiro, a working-class suburb of Rio de Janeiro. Ronaldo was born here in September 1976 and was rarely seen without a ball at his feet. He was very naughty, very playful, terrible. But right from a young age, he loved playing football. Football was already in his blood. Indoor five aside, or futsal, as it's known in Brazil, was his first love. And it was here at his local club, Valkeri, that he first caught the eye. Things only started to happen when he was around 10 or 11, and he started playing up at the Valkyrie Tennis Club. From then on, his star really shone. News of the talented youngster quickly spread. He was soon invited to play for Social Ramos Club, a larger and better organised club in Rio's northern suburbs. Tall, quick and skillful, Ronaldo possessed all the attributes for a potential star. It was lower league side Sao Cristóvão who gave him his first opportunity in 1991, after Rio's top clubs refused to pay his bus fare for a trial. Ronaldo was brought here because of the ability he'd been showing primarily at futsal, at the Social Ramos Club where he'd really stood out. His main qualities were his pace, dribbling at speed, and when the ball came to him, he already knew what he was going to do. 44 goals in under two years ensured his stay at the club would be short-lived. To the surprise of many, though, his next move was to Cruzeiro, a first division team based 340 kilometres away from Rio. In December 1992, I said, we've sent a boy to Cruzeiro who's going to be Brazil's next striker. He'll play in the 98 World Cup. They asked the name, and I said, Ronaldo. He was signed to play for Cruzeiro's youth team, but it was instantly obvious that Ronaldo had the talent to step up to the senior team. The 
first time I saw him play was at Cruzeiro. He was still a kid, just 16 or 17 years old. It was in a game where he ended up scoring five goals. And from that point on, he showed he was truly a phenomenon in the way he moved on the pitch and the way he scored goals. In his only season at Cruzeiro, he averaged almost a goal a game, helping the club win their first Copa de Brazil along the way. Brazil had woken up to a new star. You can just see it, how someone's different to other players. Someone like Kaká doesn't have it. He's a great player. But he doesn't have that streak of genius, something that sets him apart. Ronaldo had it at Cruzeiro. He had it. At just 17, he was already being compared to the great Pelé. And just as Pelé had been called up to play in the 1958 World Cup at the same age, Ronaldo was included in Brazil's World Cup squad in 1994. He wasn't thrown into the team like Pelé had been. We held him back because we had a good team and some good players, so we decided to keep him for later. This missed penalty by Italy's Roberto Baggio gave Brazil their first World Cup victory in 24 years. Despite not playing a game, the experience proved invaluable for Ronaldo. We gave him the chance to see what it was like to be part of a World Cup winning team, even though he didn't play. But he was there to experience the atmosphere, and that was very important for his career. After the World Cup, PSV Eindhoven paid 4.7 million euros to bring Ronaldo to the Netherlands. The boy from Bento Ribeiro had gone from São Cristóvão's youth team to world champion in European football in under two years. I'm very happy to have only played alongside him and not against him. I can guarantee you a lot of players have suffered playing against him. They're still suffering now. I'm just happy to have helped him score, both at PSV and with Brazil. And how they suffered, Ronaldo scored 54 goals in 57 games for PSV. The period in which he really played football, and I mean really played, was from the beginning in Cruzeiro through to when he moved to Holland and then the move from Holland to Spain. After two years in Holland, Ronaldo was on the move again. It wasn't a surprise that a club of Barcelona stature won the race for his signature. But few could have expected what was to come next. This is a guy, of course, who come, come from Holland. No one knew very much about him. He hadn't cost that much money, and he was just phenomenal. The pure ability of Ronaldo was 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 just something else. I mean, you look at his goal scoring record. He scored 34 goals that year. Um, he was scoring goals on his own, game after game. He was just frighteningly good. It was almost like he was too good for the league. In his one season at the Catalan club, he was the Primera Liga top scorer, helping Barcelona to the Copa del Rey, Supercopa de España and the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. There's a very famous image of a, of, a, of a very, very famous goal that Ronaldo scored away at Compostela for Barcelona and he picked the ball up on the halfway line and he had about four people. I mean, it was like watching Jonah Lomu play rugby. He had players hanging off his shirt and he would just run through the middle, throwing them off, stop, go through. I think he went around about six or seven players. Bobby Robson, who was the Barcelona coach at the time, standing on the touchline, just scratching his head as if to say, what on earth have I just seen? What the hell has this guy just done? They were just phenomenal that year, um, but it wasn't so much that they were, it was that he was. Despite appearing happy and settled in Spain, Ronaldo now expected to be among the club's top earners. Inter Milan's general manager, Sandro Mazzola, was alerted to the situation and decided to test Ronaldo's resolve with a timely phone call. 
So I got him on the phone and he said, yes, Inter is a great club. But he was very correct and said, if Barcelona pay me what they owe me, then I'll stay at Barcelona because I like it here. If not, then I'll leave and see what Inter say. When Mazzola got his man, more than 50,000 fans came to the San Siro Stadium to greet their new hero. And despite weight of expectations, Ronaldo didn't disappoint, leading Inter to the UEFA Cup in his first season. What I saw Ronaldo do in that first year at Inter, well, I've never seen anyone do that before. He did incredible things with the ball, at such speed, incredible. Everyone knew that with Ronaldo in the team, we could get to a certain point. And that was winning titles. And while everyone else played their part, he was the icing on the cake. He made the difference. To watch Ronaldo was pure football. How he stopped the ball, how he ran, how he changed direction, what he invented. Voted World Player of the Year in 1996 and 97, Ronaldo was the first megastar of football's modern era. He was ready to explode for Brazil at the 98 World Cup Finals. We knew that Ronaldo would be an incredible player. Maybe not a new Pelé, but a great player, and a player Brazil were crying out for back then. And so he came on the scene at exactly the right time. At just 21, he was already central to his country's World Cup aspirations. Brazil legends Mario Zagallo and Zico ran the team, but the 1998 World Cup was all about Ronaldo. His movement off the ball is just fantastic. I've never seen anyone with better movement. He'd position himself in such a way that would make it really easy to play alongside him. I'd like to have played with him, because I'm sure he'd have then scored 2,000 goals. I'd have given him the ball every time. In 98, Ronaldo was in good form, playing well in all the games. He played with a lot of desire, wanted to show that he could become one of the most important players in Brazilian football. Because before Ronaldo, there had been so many great Brazilian strikers. He knew this was his moment. He could really explode onto the scene. While he was blessed with skill and ability, he was also very powerful. He could glide past players without going down, even though defenders tried to knock him off the ball. So he had this physical strength as well as movement. And that was different to other strikers. Ronaldo scored four times for Brazil on the way to the final against France. And now the eyes of the world were on him. Yet on the eve of the game, the young star's world was about to be turned upside down. Acordei cinco horas. I woke up at five, and when I left my room and met the press officer, he said to me. Have you heard what's happened to Ronaldo? I said, no. And he told me that he'd had a fit. So for me, he was out of the game. So I picked Edmundo in Ronaldo's place and started to go through the tactics with everyone. We got on the bus in silence. No one was singing. We went to the dressing room and the players began to prepare for the game, change and stretch. When, 
Suddenly, who comes in? Ronaldo. Chega. O Ronaldo. Ele falou assim: Zagallo, não me tira dessa. He said to me, Zagallo, eu não tô nada. don't take this away from me. Senti I'm fine. It happened atrás. seven hours ago, but I'm fine now. Agora não tô the test sentindo. gave me the all clear. Os exames deram 100%. I want to play. E eu quero jogar. Ronaldo, você sabe o que você tá I said, falando? Ronaldo, you don't know what you're saying. Zagallo, And he said, Zagallo, I'm not a kid. Se alguma coisa, eu If something was wrong você. with me, I tell you. And so what happened? Aí, I said, aconteceu? right. You're in the team. You're playing. Você vai jogar. French playmaker Zinedine Zidane scored twice in a comfortable 3-0 win for the hosts. Ronaldo was a far cry from the striker who tormented defences over the previous five years. Brazil was simply lost without his inspiration. France beat us, and deservedly so. But I think our main concern was with Ronaldo. The man, our friend. And Brazil didn't have a 100% fit Ronaldo playing for them, so that really affected the team. Yet Ronaldo's nightmare was only just beginning. Back at Inter, his goal scoring remained prolific. But in November 99, he tore ligaments in his right knee before tearing them again in April 2000. He was given only a 50% chance of playing football again. The real Ronaldo never came back. Obviously, he was still a great player and still so inventive, but he wasn't the same. A shame. Such a shame. Awful that he was destroyed in that way. Ronaldo refused to give in, however. After a strict rehabilitation program and almost two years out of the game, he returned to action in September 2001. But the rest of his season was hampered by injury, and few expected him to be a force for Brazil in the 2002 World Cup. Ronaldo, though, was determined to erase those painful memories from four years ago in Paris. We spent at least a month training before that World Cup, and he really threw himself into it. He prepared so well with all the exercises he did to help his knee. Any doubts that he lacked the fitness to cope at the top level once again were immediately dispelled in Brazil's opening games, and his growing self-belief was infectious. Imagine having a player who's always making those runs with such good movement and such ability, then it makes your life in midfield so much easier. You know you can pass him any old ball and he'll finish it off. His explosive pace and speed off the mark may not have been the same, but his eye for a goal and intelligence of movement remained undiminished. When the ball was with Gilberto Silva or Cleberson or Ronaldinho, Ronaldo would make a run so that if they got the ball to him right then, he'd always be clean through on goal. I'd be shouting at the TV for them to pass him the ball. As Brazil progressed through the tournament, Ronaldo decided to celebrate his return to form with a change of style as well. Yeah, that's just one of his crazy little things. He told us, I'm going to get my hair cut and you'll see how cool I look. And so the next day he turns up with that hairstyle, looking, looking like a nutter. We couldn't believe it. We were saying, are you mad? How can you leave your hair like that? The haircut obviously made a difference. A typical Ronaldo strike was enough to see off Turkey by a single goal in the semi-final. All eyes were on Brazil's number nine as he prepared to face Germany in the final. I think he's a phenomenon. I think his comeback is the finest example of someone battling against the odds that I've ever seen, ever. For this boy to do what he did after everything he went through is incredible. This time, the world saw the real Ronaldo. Disregarded and written off at the age of 25, he'd answered his critics in the most emphatic of ways. He scored both Brazilian goals in a 2-0 win, ending the tournament as top scorer with eight. The disappointments of the previous four years could now be banished to history.
And then we saw Ronaldo return from injury, score two goals in a World Cup final, become the top scorer in that tournament, break records. I think it was so important, a great moment of joy, not just for Ronaldo, but for Brazilian football and for those of us who played alongside him. Crowned World Footballer of the Year for a record third time, Ronaldo was hot property once again. After five years at Inter, he decided on a new challenge, becoming the latest Galactico at Real Madrid. He was one of those players that Florentino Perez had always loved. After the World Cup final, how would you get Ronaldo? especially after he scored two goals against Germany. He was one of the best players in the world. But Florentino had to sign him because of the Galactico project. Ronaldo proved himself worthy of his Galactic status, coming off the bench to score twice on his debut against Alaves. For the Madrid fans, it was even more satisfying given his history with their eternal rivals, Barcelona. To see him in a Real Madrid shirt was twice the thrill and obviously a huge statement. I think Ronaldo was brilliant for Real Madrid as well. I think one of the problems that, that perhaps with hindsight you look at Ronaldo's time at Madrid and you think, well, he wasn't the player he was at Barcelona. But in some ways he was almost better. Uh, his finishing was that little bit more, more sharp. Certainly when Ronaldo went one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper, you knew what was going to happen. His peak had gone as such, which was sad really because of his, I think he just had too many um, knee injuries, so he was excellent when I was there, so God knows what he was like when he was at Barcelona. In 127 games for Real, Ronaldo scored 83 times. He'll perhaps be best remembered though at the Madrid club for his role in the destruction of Manchester United in a Champions League quarter-final at Old Trafford. The fact that he scored a hat-trick away at Old Trafford in a, in a huge game, I think, um, probably was the pinnacle of his career at Madrid. It wasn't like brilliant play from us carving the opposition open, it was, it was down to him. Still deadly on the pitch, Ronaldo was also gaining a reputation for his rather wayward lifestyle off it. The biggest comment you could give him really was that everybody loves him, everybody's got you know, nice words to say. I didn't know one person who disliked him. There was a real sense with, with Ronaldo that, um, that while he, he clearly liked to party, while, while, I mean, he very famously took the entire squad to Paris for, for a marriage that never was on, on Valentine's Day one year, and there was a real sense that that kind of derailed the team. Very famously, again, he had, he had a, I think it was his 29th birthday party, and the press were outside his, his house watching, literally watching coach loads of girls turn up and all his teammates turn up, and there was a big sort of song and dance about it, but, but he was scoring goals. Some players, Raoul amongst them, kind of disliked his attitude towards training, but it was impossible to not like him as a man. There was a definite charm about it. And for as long as he was impossibly brilliant, it wasn't really held against him. But his off-field antics were beginning to catch up with him. In 2006, Ronaldo played in his fourth World Cup finals. But while he was as clinical as ever in front of goal, he was out of shape and lacking in pace. I think sometimes Ronaldo believed he didn't need to work as hard as the rest of us. He thought that maybe he could do in two days training what it took others to learn in 10 days, and usually he could. His goal against Ghana in the last 16 was his 15th in all World Cups, surpassing the record held by Gerd Müller for more than 20 years. But both Brazil and Ronaldo were no longer the force of old. I think it was overconfidence. Everyone thought it was already won. That's what the press thought in Brazil and the rest of the world. What the directors and every Brazilian thought. Because we had the magic quartet, it would simply be Brazil against the rest. And that's not how it works. Brazil succumbed to a 1-0 defeat to France in the quarter-finals. After 97 games and 62 goals, it would be his last international appearance. Only Pelé has scored more in a Brazil shirt. Though in many quarters, Ronaldo was held to blame for Brazil's early exit. I think the criticism he's had during his career is only normal. He's had to live with it on a daily basis because he's Ronaldo. He has to live with that commotion.
but wherever he's been, Ronaldo has always produced. Ronaldo is only ever criticised for what he does off the pitch. No one can criticise what he does on the pitch. It's impossible to knock him for his football. And despite the continuing goals and the achievements and accolades throughout the years, it's a testament to Ronaldo's ability that there's still a sense of what might have been. Sometimes you watch Ronaldo and you think, Cor, if you tried, if you tried, you could have been the most incredible footballer ever. Ronaldo Luis Nazario da Lima, a striker touched with genius, truly a phenomenon.